Okay, then uh, it's five minutes. Uh, it's three and five minutes, so it's 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 fair for you all that you have been uh, on time that we that we start the um, the uh, this webinar um, today because we have, as you know, expected uh, we have had some unexpected uh, technical problems. Um, our CEO is not able to; she's not able to introduce me. So I'm going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Jao Manin. I am the technical and R and D director of of DM Comas. I've been uh, in the company for 15 years, and my basics, my basic uh, formation is is um, chemist. I'm chemist, and then I've made a PhD in material science, uh, more specifically in thermal spray, in the University of Barcelona. And after that, uh, I also make the the, the studies of uh, welding engineer. So I am an European welding engineer. And here in Comas, well, so I have, we have been working for many years with, with, with them and I have a very big background in um, uh, heat treatment, brazing, welding, uh, term spray, of course, because of my foundation, no, of, of my background, uh, as well as uh, machining and baby bearing technology and so on. Um, for all of you that you that don't know TM Comas, we are a, a mechanical workshop uh, with a very very high capacities of of, the, of uh, surface engineering, thermal spray, laser cladding, and maybe baby bearing um, casting capabilities. Uh, and we work for oil and gas and petrochemical industry, especially in, in south of Europe, and also in the north of Africa. And we are starting right now in the Middle East. So, um, well, after that brief uh, presentation, um, I will proceed. Today, I am going to explain you, uh, I'm going to talk about thermal spray. Thermal spray um, is one of our core business. It's the technology that we um, take, that we uh, introduced to in our company uh, about 40 years ago. We were the first company in Spain to take uh, thermal spray technology into the into the market. Uh, we took the technology from Switzerland at that time, and yes, we 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 are the we've been the pioneers and we are the leading the leading company in Spain using thermal spray for for third parties for our customers. We don't have an, an own project, an own pro. Mm, mm, an own product, sorry, but we use it for our customers to, to help them with, uh, with surface problems. So the title of the webinar is Thermal Spray, Main Characteristics and How Do We Apply It to Meet Industrial Needs. So let's start. Okay, so uh, what do we understand for thermal spray? It's a, it's a group of surface technologies that creates thin coatings from 30 microns to one millimeter, maybe more, um, from a powder or wire fixed of material due to the combined action of thermal and gas acceleration. So creating a stream, a jet of semi-molten particles that will uh, impact on a prepared surface. So we will have, we will speak, we will, we will talk about GANs. Um, for us, a GAN is, is the tool where the energy and the raw material, the feedstock material will, will meet. And here we will have a kind of uh, melting process of the raw material and the acceleration will take place on the flight from the GAN to the substrate. So they will have in the GAN, they will have, we will have uh, first the kinetic and thermal energy generation with a gas, with a arc, with an electric arc. And then we will have the material energy interaction. The fixed stock material will interact with the energy to become molten or semi molten and to, and to uh, become accelerated. And then we finally we will have the particle substrate interaction here in the substrate in the in the surface of the substrate 
where uh, hundreds or thousands or millions of tiny particles will uh, impact on the surface creating the coating. So we will speak uh, of about spray guns, coatings, layers, particles, velocity, temperature, and so on. Okay. This technology is quite old. Uh, in fact, uh, it's more than 100 years old. Here we have the inventor, Mr. Uh, Ulrich Schub from Switzerland, who, he, who invented a, a, a flame, uh, a gun, which worked with a combustion, with a flame, it's like a, a burner. Uh, here we can see another guy uh, hold, holding the wire. So the wire goes into the tip where there is a flame and it accelerates a molten stream of particles into a substrate. Here, these are the drawings from his patent. And basically, the, the basics of the technologies uh, remain unchanged since, since then, since, since there. The market. So where all these uh, technologies are used? These technologies are used in a very critical applications like aerospace. You can see that it's the biggest uh, portion of the market is aerospace and industrial gas turbines. That means that the most of more than the half of the of the market is belongs to very very demanding applications. So uh, it gives you an idea on how reliable and how good uh, um, the benefits that can take these technologies to to your to solve your problems. Other sectors, but they are more than here, are automotive, electronics, oil and gas, medical, energy and power, and other. There are hundreds of applications that will fall into this small uh, portion of, of, the, of the share, which, uh, which is others. And we are, in, in TM Commerce, we are focusing more or less in, in oil and gas, uh, power generation, and others. So let's, let's start um, talking about how the coating builds up. First, we have the impact, okay? All these small droplets will, will fly, will come to the substrate and will impact on the, on the surface. Uh, and every ten, tiny droplet will spread, okay, over the surface. This, this spread uh, particle, we call it splat, okay? And, and depending on the speed, the portion, the, the, um, how, how molten or solid is the particle and, uh, and, the, and the substrate roughness and so on, it will create a, a, a splat pattern or the other. So we have different splats, geometries, um, that depends on uh, spraying parameters, feedstock material, uh, substrate roughness, and some, sometimes a substrate temperature, and so on. So we, can, we have to play. We have to play with all these parameters to achieve uh, the best splat morphology because this splat morphology, when the coating is, is going to be built up, will give the, the coating the purpose of the coating. We have to be aware that as the surface is cold, because this is a non-transfer technology, these are non-transfer technology, that means that we are not melting the surface we are applying a coating that will stick, but there, will be, there won't be a diffusion like a welding. So uh, this, this coating, um, due to that, the heat input to the substrate is very low, which we used to call cold techniques, cold coatings, cold, cold uh, layers, um, uh, very cold. So the, um, there will be a very, very fast cooling of those uh, small teeny uh, droplets when they spread over the surface. Okay, and here we have this diagram that shows uh, where the heat flow goes from every splat uh, to the heat sink that is the, sur the substrate. That means that we are going to quench all these uh, small particles so the hardness of the coatings will can be very very high due to the, that fast, fast uh, quenching. We have to be aware 
of the residual stress during the coating buildup. There will be three different residual stresses. Uh, stresses that comes from the impact. So during the impact, um, there will be the splat will spread and then it, as it cools down, it will shrink. And due to the shrink, we will have some tensile stresses in the, in the particles. Then, because we will have two materials bonded together with different coefficients of thermal expansion, so it will have, uh, uh, there will be uh, some stresses coming from this uh, CTA mismatch. match. That those stresses can be tensile or compressive. And finally, uh, we'll have some uh, impact stresses, the stresses that came from, from the um, impact of the semi-molten particles over the others that are previously uh, deposited on the substrate, this impact will create a compressive tensile in the coating. So uh, the final or the total stress in the coating will be the, the, the addition or the sum of these three um, um, components. And this is the key factor to understand that not all the materials, not with all the techniques, we can have two millimeter coating, for example. Depending on these stresses and how, uh, how compact is, is the layer, the stresses will be tensile in such a way that if we increase too much the coating thickness, the coating will start to crack or if we continue increasing the thickness, it will eventually um, jump, it will be a, a delamination of the coating. So it's very important to understand that with some materials and some techniques, we have a certain limit, a certain maximum thickness that we will be uh, achieving, okay? So as I said, uh, the adhesion of the splats, the adhesion of the coating itself is mechanical. So if the, there's no diffusion, there's no welding, it's just mechanical ad adhesion that is promoted by the surface roughness. Here, there's a nice picture where we can see that uh, the splats, when they shrink to the solidification, uh, there's contraction and, and they will add there perfectly in the roughness profile. So this roughness will create a, a bonding um, uh, strength that will enable us to, to spray the coating on the surface. Okay, so the roughness is very important, plays a very important role in the adhesion of the coatings. It's very important to, it's very important to, to have a good preparation of the surface clean, without oxides, without paints, uh, and with a certain roughness to create a good adhesion and hence to create a good coating. So then all the droplets will come with uh, subsequent passes of the torch on the gun. So we will be, we are increasing the thickness of the coatings step by step, layer by layer, until uh, re reaching the desired uh, thickness. And this drawing uh, shows how this coating is created. So there will be splats, it will be some oxidation, depending on the, on the technology, it will be higher or lower. It will be microporosity, some unmelted particles, and this will be the coating. Here in the right side, I've presented three different um, cross sections of the coatings. Um, a metallic one, here you can see the coating after the oxidation, after working at high temperature, there's an oxide layer in the, la in the interface between the substrate and the coating. Here we have uh, a abradable coating, nickel graphite with a lot of graphite particles on it that will uh, create a very soft um, coating. And here we have a, a gradual layer coating from metallic, metallic ceramic and pure ceramic coating applied on TVC coatings, for example. So depending on the material, depending on the technique, the, the appearance or the structure of the coating will be different. And it's, well, it, you have to, to know, you have to have some knowledge in metallurgy to understand how, uh, how, how a coating looks like in its uh, cross-section, okay? So 
up to now I have spoken about uh, thermal spray in general. Now I'm going to speak some of the uh, most common techniques available in the market. Um, I will concentrate on the on the fourth uh, techniques that we have here at e home in, in TM Comas. Obviously, there are more in the market, but uh, we only we only and there are a lot. Uh, we have four um, um, four technologies in in house to be applied for customers. Okay, so um, the main the main and the first uh, um, difference is the energy uh, source. Uh, we speak about combustion-based technologies where we have a, where we will have a flame, or we have an uh, electric arc-based uh, uh, technologies in which the energy input will be given by an electric arc. Cold spray is the most new uh, technology in this family, and it has nothing to do with those two old. Um, separate groups, combustion electric arc, uh, that it relates into another uh, kind of, of um, interaction of the particles with the substrate. There's, there's no heat input in the, in the feedstock material, there's only high speed and impact uh, features. Uh, and this is a very special technique that I'm not going to talk about it today. So, um, Depending on, on the technique that I'm going to use, I will have a different flame. It's logic to understand that. So, and I can choose techniques that will give or that will, will promote velocity instead of temperature, or I will have more temperature than velocity. And I can play with that to, to make different coatings, to make different coatings uh, properties, uh, or to, with the same material, have very different porosity, for example, to play with that. So um, I've, 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 I am giving you a, a, a resume, a summary of all these techniques, where they are, in, in where we talk about the velocity and flame. And well, all the technologies that will promote velocity will have reduced porosity, very good strength, uh, increase in the laminar cohesion because the impact velocity will be very high, so the, the cohesion between the splats will be, will be higher than if we go to uh, uh, um, lower velocities. Uh, on the other hand, if we increase temperature, we will have more oxidation, we will have more phase transformation during the flight of the particles in the, in the flame to the substrate. So we can play with that, okay? Okay, uh, now let's go into more practical things. Where do we apply these coatings? Well, in the workshop, uh, we, this is our workshop, we have three boots. Uh, they are uh, soundproof boots with extraction and fully optimized with robots and, and turning tables or, or laces in this, in, for, for uh, roads, or piston roads or whatever. Um, and this is more or less what it looks like. So we have a filter, we have an extraction of the flumes here with a booth, uh, a robot, turning table, and outside the coating, outside the booth, sorry, we have the panel, the touchscreen control for uh, controlling the process parameters, the powder feeder, and uh, well, the powder supply, the cooling, the, the chiller, because all these guns are water chilled, so we have a chiller, we have a lot of peripherals that are going to be used at the same time to apply the coatings. So now let's jump to, to the four techniques that I would like to explain to you today. Um, the, all the explanation will be based on the same. I will start with the basic design. Then I will, I will tell you some examples, real examples, where we are using these technologies in our workshop, okay? So the first one is that one that uh, Mr. Shub developed more than 100 years ago, um, that is wire flame spraying, okay? This is a very basic design. We have a wire that will come actually into the, to the gun, and here in the, to in the point of the gun, gun, we have a flame. It's like a burner. Oxygen plus 
most of the times is acetylene, but we can also use hydrogen, propane, natural gas. And of course, there will be a compressed air that will uh, make the atomization of the material uh, that is melt here in the point of the wire. So the wire became solid, and, in the, and here in the flame melts the point of the wire, and the compressed air atomizes this, this, this liquid uh, point, creating this jet this uh, jet of molten particles that will uh, impinge, that will uh, impact on the surface. It's a very simple uh, equip. Uh, uh, there's a control cabinet uh, to control the, the gas flows, a compressed air, a wire feeder, and a gun. So it's, it's quite basic. Okay, so what what thick touch material can we can we use? Can we spray with with wire flame? So it has to be metallic because we have to create the wire, and uh, so um, we are um, just relying on wires here: carbon steel, stainless steel, copper alloys, brass, molybdenum, zinc, uh, zinc aluminium, aluminium, baby nickel alloys, uh, and that's it. That, it, that's a lot, eh? but, but that's it. We cannot spray uh, ceramics, although some people will complain about that because there are some special guns that are using acetylene and they can spray some ceramic rods, but there's a very specific gun and it's not the, the most common. Uh, how do the, the coatings look like? So we will have usually high thickness, up to two millimeters, because this is a low, low, power, low speed technique. So the speed is, is, it will be not very high. So the particles will, will travel during a lot of time, a lot of oxidation, and the impact will be not so strong. So the stresses will be low, and that will allow us to make a thick coating. So up to two millimeters or more, high velocity, because that, that uh, small velocity, high ice spread roughness, even that most of the coatings after spraying we are going to machine, but anyway, in this case, the roughness after the spray, after spraying the coating is, 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 is high. And there will be a strong oxidation. Here, oxidation, this is a, a, a copper coating into the tin coating, and all these black areas are the oxidation, the oxides that are created during the flight of the particles to the substrate. Some examples. Um, well, we are using this uh, low performance or enough performance, but it's, it's low performance in reality coatings to uh, some to um, to restore the, the, the dimension of, of the parts of our customers. In this case, we have here a piston road that it uh, due to the wear or due to the the function of this piston road, the seat of the bearing has become loose, so we have to recover the original dimension, and to do that we are spraying an inner coating in an inner diameter, we can spray in an inner diameter or in an outer diameter, so in this case it's inner diameter, and we, are spray, we can spray carbon steel, stainless steel, nickel-based alloy. Most, mostly we use carbon steel to spray and these, these coatings. Another example of a bearing seat. Here is a, it's a gearbox of a train industry. So that, in, yeah, another, and, and again, the seat of the building has become worn. So we have sprayed here, this is a sprayed uh, coating. Uh, in this case, it's a nickel-based alloy, and this is after machining, after uh, rounding this uh, seat area to the final dimension. Um, this is a cast iron, so the benefit of a thermal spray coating is obvious. We don't have to weld um, on a cast iron to to uh, recover the original dimension. So they will, there won't be distortion of the part. And this is a very important uh, issue to have in mind. Another example of dimensional restoration, the inner surface of a big gear. In this case, the same, this has been a, a 
um, malfunctioning of the gear into the uh, or onto the shaft, so it, it has they, come, they have become loose, and we have um, uh, recovered that anti internal surface of the that gear with carbon steel. The second technique I would like to spray is arc spraying. Arc spraying is an arc electric arc based technology. It relies on the creation of an electric arc between two wires. It's, it's like we have two MIG uh, systems. Uh, the two MIG wires are going into the same place and the arc is, is uh, jumps between the two wires, not between a wire and the, and the part, like in welding, but the arc jumps between these two wires in the gun. Here we can see the gun and again, we have a compressed air that is uh, atomizing the molten mm, metals in the point of those wires. Here we can see an example eh, of, of how big and how spectacular is that, that flame, arch spray flame. These are, are again quite uh, simple systems, more or less complicated due to a control, but they are portable. We can we have we have used them a lot of times for in uh, in situ works uh, because they are portable. Uh, you only have to have some power and compressed air. There's no gas to create a flame, and uh, nothing that but uh, compressed air. Mostly we are spraying 1.6 millimeter wires, even uh, although you can use thicker wires for more um, heavy duty uh, um, arc spraying. The thick talks again, we have to rely on wires, uh, metallic wires. Uh, so we have carbon steel, stainless steel, white denim, super alloys like Inconel 625, uh, hast alloys or uh, iron based super alloys, Babib. And here in this case, we have the option of cord wires. For hard facing application, this is very common to use cord, uh, cord wires with some filler, powder filler, or hard face filler in it so that we can use it um, to spray like a ceramic, like a ceramic metal uh, coating um, in the form of a wire. So very, very interesting to use cord wires to, to hard facing applications. This is more or less how this coating looks like. In this case, it's not so oxidized like in flame spray uh, because the, the speed and is, is a bit higher. So the in-flight time will be lower in this, in this technology. Again, this is a low performance, a low power uh, technology. So the, the residual stress will be in a moderate uh, level. So the thickness uh, to be able to apply is about 100 to 2 millimeters or more uh, in thickness. High porosity 2 to 10 percent due to the relatively low speed of, of the flame. Uh, high spray roughness 6 to 12 microns of array and strong to moderate oxidation. Even that you can play with the gas instead of using uh, compressed air you can use uh, um, inert gas uh, to reduce the, uh, the oxidation of the particles, but at the end, um, the speed is not so high, so the time of, of flight will be, high, will be high, and this will tend to oxidize a bit the particles during the flight. Examples. Uh, in this uh, big, big uh, white cast iron uh, roll for a milling, uh, milling uh, machine uh, factory, there was a severe damage in the bearing area. In fact, they have to cut and gush with the oxygen flame uh, the bearing because it was stuck in there. So they, they, they created a lot of damage in the surface. Uh, after machining, you can still see how big there were those, those holes. And we, we, we decided to use that arc spray we are here, we are spraying with uh, manual spraying, in this case. Um, and after grinding, the bearing seat area has become perfect in, in its original dimension. So ready to work and without having to weld on a cast iron, big part. 
uh, another example of, of arc spray coating, in this case, an inner coating of, uh, of uh, reciprocating compressor sleeve, 800 millimeter in diameter. In this case, here we can perfectly see this area has been um, restored, and not only restored, but because using this high, relatively high hardness coating, we are increasing the wear performance of this uh, sleeve. Uh, and so the customer will be will have this uh, part working more time due to that different uh, and high hardness higher hardness uh, coating uh, in in this area of of the part. It's obvious, no? This is, this was a, a cast iron uh, sleeve, and we have increased. We have almost doubled the the surface hardness due to that uh, thermal spray arc spray coating, uh, martensitic stainless steel. Another, another example here in our workshop, uh, we are restoration, the, the final dimension and also hard facing of a paper mill roll. And in this case, we are using two guns because uh, it's a quite big part. So um, the spraying time was quite a lot and using two guns at the same time, it allows us to reduce the spraying time to the half. So it's, it was very interesting to create this, this kind of handle system to. To, to put two guns at the same time. And in this case, we are using, an, uh, again, this martensitic stainless steel. Now, uh, let, me, let me explain you, uh, let me introduce you uh, one of my favorite techniques, which is high velocity oxy fuel HVOF technique. This is a state of the art technology, a very powerful technology that we are using every day to the most demanding applications. Uh, in this case, we are uh, talking about a high velocity um, technology, uh, a high power technology. So we are, we will, we will, we will having coatings with uh, few porosity, um, a few oxidation, and so on. So the basic design of the gun is more or less a burner. So we are again relying on a flame to, to give energy to the to the feedstock materials, but this uh, has a special design with a combustion chamber that it, it will have here a, a pressure about 10 to 12 bars and a small exit of those um, combustion chamber through a, a, a barrel. So we have a delaval barrel, a com converse, uh, conversion diversion barrel, and this will create a uh, a group exit of the gas, creating itself a high speed uh, flame. Um, uh, the systems are a bit more complex. We will have, we still rely on compressed air. We still rely on a fuel and our, and our oxygen. We are using propylene, propane, hydrogen, natural gas, kerosene. In here, in commas, we are using natural gas. Uh, but all these fuels can be used to create the flame. We have a powder feed that has to be, it has to be pressurized to overcome the pressure of the combustion chamber. Uh, of course, these guns are, um, uh, are cooled, water cooled, so we need a chiller and we need all the mass flow controls to control the flow of the gas to have a very precise um, spray and parameters day by day. So, in this case, we are using fine grain size powder. We are using powder. So using powder, it opens us a lot of possibilities. Uh, so this is a very special um, technology that creates a, a supersonic flame. Uh, that supersonic flame uh, is characterized by some shock diamonds that are visible because they are brighter than the flame itself. They are in a white to blue bright and the flame itself is blue to orange so they are, these diamonds are perfectly seen during the spraying especially if you are not using powder just this flame and these shocks these, these diamonds are telling you that this flame is supersonic with this supersonic flame we are using to accelerate a lot the particles to the substrate this high acceleration will create a very, very uh, strong impact, a strong bonding, uh, very short flying time. So uh, we will reduce the oxidation and create a very wonderful coatings.
We are using uh, a jet reactor, a jet engine in, uh, in miniature because uh, this is how it looks like a, a, a jet uh, engine um, trials. Here you can see how these uh, shock diamonds, and here is a picture of our coat, our gun, sorry. Uh, uh, here, these six or seven diamonds that can be seen at the exit of the flame. So we have a small jet reaction um, engine uh, in our hands in the robot to create the coatings. Feedstock, so we are able to spray tungsten and chromium carbide. This is basically the most used uh, feedstock for high velocity oxy fuel is uh, tungsten and chromium carbides for wear applications. In fact, this technique was designed or was developed to spray tungsten carbide coatings because with this technology, we can spray a tungsten carbide that contains as maximum as 88% of tungsten carbide plus 12% of metallic matrix. is the technology that, we, that enables us to place the highest amount of tungsten carbide uh, phase in a coating of all the existing in the market. So it's very interesting to, to use it for, for tungsten carbide in, in, in piston roads and in, in very demanding wear applications. But we can also spray uh, metallic alloys like carbon steel, stylus steel, molybdenum, nickel-based alloys, inconel, hast alloys, uh, sex fluxing, or abradables with some uh, aluminum cesium polyester, uh, amongst others. How the, the coatings look, look like? Though, uh, they will have low porosity, about 0.5 to 2 percent. They will have the lowest oxidation of, of, of all the thermal spray techniques, apart of uh, cold spray. Um, the uh, spray roughness will be quite low, three to five microns, although you know that um, most of the coatings are then grinded to 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.8, between 0 and 0 and 8 and, and 1% RA is the most um, usual roughness that we can achieve after spraying. Examples, so reciprocating compressor rods. Again, these were bars here the, the, in this, uh, all in this uh, cylindrical surface, sorry. Um, the, uh, the seals will, will create a, a very abrasive um, behavior. And if we are not hardening this surface, this rod will last uh, very, very, very little. So we are um, increasing, we are spraying tungsten carbide, tungsten carbide, cobalt chromium, tungsten carbide, cobalt chromium, nickel, or chromium carbide coatings by XBOF in those um, petrochemical or oil and gas industry piston rolls. And we are doing every day. So we are doing a lot of piston roads reparation and piston roads new uh, manufacturing. Here we can see how this uh, high speed, uh, high velocity flame looks like and how we are um, focusing that flame onto the piston road, uh, p uh, compressor road, sorry, um, uh, surface. Here a, a, a small, a higher, a bigger uh, compressor uh, rod. We are also using these high velocity oxy fuel coatings, in this case, uh, martensitic stainless steel coatings to um, restore the original dimension in bearing areas in compressor and turbine rotors. Okay, we, we have a lot of examples during the year of using this, this technology to, to repair these areas. It's this, this technology is approved by API so we are on the safe side and we are using every day. Uh, okay, uh, I, another example for uh, wear protection in general of various application in these compressor shaft, big compressor shaft, three or four meter longs, we are spraying tungsten carbide into the uh, shaft sleeves. Okay, here is an, a, a part of an uh, hydroelectric uh, turbine, uh, a ball for a, 
of uh, to, uh, chromium carbide protection of ball valve, we are spraying more than between 2,000 and 5,000 volts per year for our different customers. So we are very active on, on, on chromium carbide spraying on, on ball valves. Uh, more examples, uh, five meter and 400 millimeter diameter tube for uh, Navy, for uh, sea, sea, sea water application. In this case, we are spraying in Cornell 625. We can spray stainless steel. We can spray, we, can, we have uh, uh, guns, inner guns, able to spray in inner surfaces like this um, mill. This is a ball mill. Uh, we are spraying tungsten carbide. Uh, pump casings uh, of chromium carbide, another pump, pump case here for wear uh, protection of all the inside of the pump. Uh, and we are doing a lot of tungsten carbide and, and, and chromium carbide for those applications. Uh, remember, with those coatings, we, are, we don't have to weld. We are not going to distort the part. Uh, in fact, this, this big shaft is a tube it's a, a 15 millimeter wall tube uh, that has been protected with Inconel. It's five meter long. So imagine how this tube will, will become after welding uh, a simple, a simple uh, area of that tube. More, uh, more uh, examples of um, wear protection of the surface, of the inner surface of the reciprocating compressor F leaves. In this case, there is a F leaf, or here in this case, it's, a, it's the compressor casing itself that is going to be coated here inside with a tungsten carbide by HBOF. Sorry. The last technology I'm going to, to explain today is plasma spray, is atmospheric plasma spray, APS. This is the most versatile technique of all. Uh, it has so much power that you can spray virtual any material you, you need. Ceramics, tungsten carbide, metals, molybdenum, um, all, because you have a lot of power. So with, the, with that power, you can melt everything. So this, this uh, technology relies on the formation of a plasma in the, in, at the end of the gun. Plasma is a state of the matter that is characterized by uh, the high conductivity and high thermal uh, and electrical and thermal conductivity of that media. So we are having, depending on the gas and the voltage, we are having between 1,200 and 20, uh, sorry, 12,000 and 20,000 kelvins. So we have enough temperature to melt everything. The basic, the, 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 the gun basic is, is, is simple. Uh, we, are have, we have a cathode, we have an anode, and between them we are facing a, a, high, a high voltage and a stream of uh, uh, plasma gas uh, is, uh, is, uh, goes through and we are um, creating this plasma. So we are using argon, helium, nitrogen, hydrogen, and their mixtures. Uh, again, we are using powder. The flame in this case is not so spectacular, it's not so big, it's shorter, but it's more, uh, it's quite powerful. And there are uh, relatively high um, complex systems because we will have the chiller, heat changer, powder feeder, pressurized, compressor again, uh, control equipment is very sophisticated because it has a lot of safeties and the control of the, of the arc or the arc plasma is not so simple. So there are a lot of electronics on, the, on those systems. And of course, gas. So we, there will be mass flow controls to control the flow of argon, the flow of helium to make the mixture. And every, every day you keep the same mixture to have the same properties and to have the same coatings. So the end, uh, those ends to be uh, very complex and expensive systems. But they allow you to spray lot, all, all, the, all the ceramic, all the materials, metallic alloys, super alloys, inconels, astalloys, uh, and ceramics. Aluminum oxide, titanium oxide, silicon oxide, chromium oxide, and a lot of this mixture of oxides 
that are only sprayable by uh, APS. Of, okay, you can also spray by HVOF, but with a special gun, special powder, special conditions, and not with a very, very high output. But the, with the plasma, you can do it. Every, you, you can do everything you want, even to spray tungsten and chromium oxides. Uh, sorry, there's a mistake. Uh, tungsten and chromium carbides. Uh, the coatings will have thickness between 20 and 3 and 500 microns, porosity in the low range 0 0.524, low roughness and moderate to low oxidation. So this is a technique that we are using mostly for ceramics because for uh, spraying tungsten and chromium carbides is the edge velocity, the HVOF is is better. So we are using mostly for, for ceramics. And ceramics to what proposed? So to uh, uh, spray or to create uh, coatings to fight against wear. Um, so we are applying uh, these wear ceramic uh, coatings extremely, extremely smooth after grinding to protect protecting sleeves, shell seal areas, pump pistons, and also uh, inner, inner coatings, we can spray the coatings inside of, of the parts, like here in this uh, polymer industry rotary valve. The coating, the ceramic goes in here, in here. This is for abrasive wear, abrasive protection of the part, because here it can handle polymer or grain or seeds and in here for uh, O-rings and for sealing areas. Abrasive wear in general in uh, hydroelectric um, Pelton turbines, pump casings, um, fun, petrochemical fun extraction blades. And this is how it looks like. Uh, the, it's a quite powerful technique, so it's better to use it uh, with a robot and with a robot, uh, a robot, a robotized automatic turn turntable to, to, to apply the coating in a, in a precise way. We use also these uh, aluminum oxide, ethyl oxide or chromium oxide coatings to, uh, in the seal uh, areas in turbine rotors, like all of this here, we are spraying about 20 to 40 turbine rotors of, of this uh, type per year. An example here, it's the wear caused by the sealing um, materials, the, stat the static sealing materials, and then after, after coating with chromium oxide by APS. Also another interesting properties that we can achieve is electrical insulation. Uh, using uh, a pure aluminum oxide or, or as, as partially doped with TO2 or with titanium dioxide, aluminum oxide. Uh, these coatings are white or uh, white to blue, light blue, and we have the properties here of electrical insulation. We are using in, uh, in roll, roller or ball bearings to insulate them and for, for some OEMs. And also we are using for some um, a pass of um, uh, windmills uh, heads to protect the, the electrical current to go from one side to the other side. With the plasma using uh, dope uh, zirconium oxide powders, we can uh, protect the pass from high temperature wear. Uh, in those parts that are working at very high temperature, it should be an oxidation, it should be, uh, it can be aware. So we are spraying zirconia family coatings uh, to, for example, uh, these uh, burners, um, steel uh, plates, uh, these uh, two meter long uh, furnace rolls for the automotive industry, or even graphite, these pure graphite rods for um, glass uh, industry. 
We can spray with plasma in inner surfaces, in this case of this wear and this, or in this gear uh, box, or here in this screw, screw compressor, and uh, we are uh, spraying in this case with a XI um, machine, or here with a robot, we are uh, placing the coating inside uh, of those holes and then it, ha it has to be uh, grinded or machined depending on the hardness of the coating. Um, but we can um, recover these inner surfaces without having to weld. So this is very important in case that the distortion of the part can be possible. So this is all. This is, oh, this is uh, what uh, all that I have to, to explain you about the different technologies that we have here. The last thing I wanted to, to, to tell you is that um, there's a lot of work behind that. There's a, a plenty of parameters to control, plenty of parameters to, to, to have in mind to optimize during a thermal spray coating. Uh, we can start in the powder itself. The powder we can play, we can choose different chemical composition and phase composition. We can choose even in a same chemical composition, tungsten carbide, we can choose between different tungsten carbide grains, different tungsten carbide um, content, um, different grand size distribution of the powder, a different morphology of the powder, uh, as spray dry powders, which are spherical, are not behaving in the same way than um, uh, crushed and, and crushed um, powders. They have different flowability, they, they have different density. So to, to reach an optimal coating, we have a lot of parameters. And one important parameter is, is the powder. Um, we have a lot, lot of materials to choose. An example uh, of a supplier, only for APS we have in, in its brochure, we have two polymer powders, 35 thermets, 94 metal al alloys, 40 mixture metal alloys, and 55 ceramic. So there's, there's a plenty of op options there's a plenty of coatings that can be applied into your problems. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is to, is to ask, is to tell your problems, and we will decide the best coating for you. Um, using wire is the same thing. Uh, we, can, we can use um, uh, core wire, we can use solid wires, uh, pure metals, iron, nickel, copper, cobalt-based alloys, so there's also plenty, plenty of options to, to use. So, uh, and just to, to finalize, um, um, don't, don't forget to, to, to have in mind that with these technologies, there's a lot of benefits, which is very, very low heat input, no um, dimensional uh, distortion, and a uh, lot of possibilities to, to different properties, insulation, wear, um, corrosion, um, rough uh, coatings for grip applications, uh, a lot of applications for thermal spray coatings, okay? So thank you for your attention. Um, it's the right, now it's the right place, a moment to, to post some questions. Um, in theory, uh, using and the chat you can you can ask something to me or maybe and always to my email account i will be there for you to 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 help you to to solve your problems in your machines or in your parts and well uh, again thank you for your attention uh, this this webinar will be available in our uh, net, I don't know if it's going to be in in uh, Instagram or in uh, on in YouTube, but it will be in sure uh, sure in the in the network in the in the next few days. So um, uh, you will you will be able to share with your mates uh, and to share this uh, technology 
to all of the people who you might think that it can be good for them. Uh, let me start some thing in the chat. Uh, Cyril is asking you how to control the quality of the applied coating and its proper bonding. Okay. Um, quality control. I, I haven't uh, spoken of quality control. Uh, it's quite basic. Um, the quality control is mostly visual because if the coating has some cracks or if it is not bonding properly, it will come off sure. So it's basic, uh, it's visual inspection. We can apply also a liquid um, dye penetrant test to the coatings to see if there are cracks. And the bonding, the way to control is by a coupon. So you can spray some coupons normalized and then you can have a, like a tensile test there is an HTM standard that uh, it gives you the instructions to do that tensile test for thermal spray coatings. So we are relying on the bonding on the trials and the coupons. So first we have, first, if the customer wants to be sure of, of the bonding, we can apply these coupons just before spraying or after spraying the parts, sending to the lab and they will uh, give us some uh, megapascals of, of adhesion. This is the only way to control the uh, adhesion of the, um, of the coating. Okay, so there's no more questions. Uh, okay, so uh, it's time to uh, finish the webinar. I will allow a couple of moments more in case someone is 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 daring to to ask something. And if not, I will close the um, webinar for today. Uh, Okay, um, yeah, thank you all. They are sending me some, some greetings. Uh, that's, 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 that's all. Uh, thank you, have a nice uh, day and hope you see you soon in the next uh, webinar that we will soon uh, releasing. Thank you, goodbye, goodbye.